It's Brian Preston, the money guy. What are the healthy ways to deal with uncertainty? Well, hold on. We, I got to put my warnism oh, in there. I got to. I have to. In there. All right. I want you to be a favor, though. That bull bear mark one, hold that one up again because okay. that was a good one, right? I'm All like right. Vanna White over here. So if, if this were a game, right, and you wanted to bet, am I, do I want to be in the blue side or the red side? You would probably say you want to be in the blue side. I mean, it takes up the, the vast majority of the page. This is what Warren said. He says, you would be making a terrible mistake if you stayed out of a game you think is going to be very good over time because you thought you could pick a better time to enter. You got to be in the game, not be picking when you're going to start getting in the game. I like that you added all these Warren Buffett comments. I do what I can. That was, that was Bo's flavor. <laughs> so let's talk about these healthy ways. Number one was focus on your long-term goals. That's right. It, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those things we've already, this is an echo of something we've already said in the show. If you can't keep your money, your hands off of the money for five to seven years, or at least have a plan that has short-term money like liquid money yep. as well as mid-term money and then long-term money, you're doing it wrong. That's right. So pay, focus on having long-term goals and then a plan that reflects those long-term goals. That's exactly right. Number two, build a broadly diversified portfolio. This is short on your yo-yo string. If you're someone who can't be out there and just deal with the wild undulations, or maybe you can deal with the wild undulations, but you've done the hard work over an entire lifetime of saving that your portfolio is large enough, you don't need to be taking those wild undulations, diversification is the way that you shorten that yo-yo string. And that's one of the things we help our clients with is making sure that the risk in their portfolio matches their financial circumstance yeah. as well as their risk tolerance. And that's, that's, it is number three, re-examine your risk level. That's because right. if you've won the game, why are you taking on so much additional risk? And, you know, because I think a lot of mistake, a mistake that the financial media does not do a good job of talking about, is they always focus on, because it's on that 10-question questionnaire that you see at 401k meetings or with the commission guys, is that what's your risk tolerance? They'll ask you, hey, market goes down. How are you reacting? You could be the biggest cowboy that's willing to ride that bucking bull for as long as it will hang on. But there's a problem. As you get older, you might not have what's called risk capacity right. or the time to let the portfolio recover. Yep. You know, because if it takes you six to eight years because you took too much risk for the market to get back to level and grow, it's going to devastate you when you retire and need That's to exactly live off right. these assets. So understand the different levels of risk. You have risk tolerance and risk capacity. And then we put on here educate yourself. Yep. Now, you're taking a great first step watching this video. Right. Money Guy family, Abound Wealth family members, you guys know we're going to try to, we have those hearts of educators mm -hmm. that we want you to know all as much data, and that's why we load you up, because we feel like the more educated you are as a consumer, the more you go, I get it. That's and right. you're not going to fall prey to somebody trying to keep your eyeballs on something because they're scaring the heebie-jeebies mm -hmm. out of you. And then, Bo, you put this last one on here, which I liked, was learn to turn those lemons into lemonade. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so if you're a, if you're a client of Abound Wealth, listen to this right now, this is what we're already doing. You're already seeing this happen in your accounts. You've seen it happening. You're continuing to see it happen. If you're just a money guy listening out there and you're doing it yourself or doing it on your own, these are some things to think about. But one of the things that happens when we see volatility, especially like volatility at the end of the year, is there's a great opportunity to go out there and harvest losses that you can use to either offset gains from earlier in this year or even potentially use in the future to offset gains that may come. Sometimes the markets provide you with a fantastic tax planning opportunity. The other thing you can do is you can reassess where your portfolio is. And I don't know if there are areas in your portfolio that have been beaten up pretty badly, say international or small cap or large cap or whatever it may be on the equity side. Maybe this is a great time to do a rebalance yep. to position some assets there. You want to sell the things that have done well and buy the things that have not done well. That's the Warren Buffettism of buy low, sell high. Volatility is that thing that provides the mechanism for you to be able to do those things. So if you can see this volatility and see these downturns as opportunities, not just times to be really scared and really nervous, it'll help reframe to where you actually do turn into that mental financial mutant that recognizes, oh, this is just part of the process, and I'm going to do the things during this part of the process I'm supposed to be doing. Now, there are a few of you out there. This is a good gut check opportunity, too. You heard Bo say, you know, use this as an opportunity to reevaluate. Maybe you got, because we've had such a good run with the financial markets, you've gotten a little out over your skis on how much risk you're taking in the portfolio. The, the reality is, is that this is somewhat similar to 2016, the fact that it looks bad in the short term, meaning that we've had a tough quarter right. so far, or really 
tough two months, a couple months. But yep. it's um, I think in the grand scheme of a year to date, it's not the worst time in the world historically. So it's a great reevaluation moment. Right. If you find that you are panicking, you're not, you're losing sleep over this. Um, you know, reach out. You know, let us know how we can help because that is a key indicator that something's just not right in your That's design. Right. Something's not right in your do-it-yourself portfolio. So use this as an opportunity to create a plan because we've already heard the research from Charles Schwab, the research in prior years from Fidelity Investments is those who plan are the successful ones. So what are you doing? Don't be a dreamer, be a planner, and then consider taking the relationship to the next level. For our clients, you know, the people, you know, we want you, if you are having any uncertainty, reach out to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. But if you're not a client, but you're sitting there and you feel all alone on an island, we do this thing. We call it the abundance cycle. We love on you. We give you this tons of free advice with the thought that, you know, you're going to at some point want somebody to look over your shoulder. And those moments where you're feeling alone and you're feeling concerned, you're worried that you're big enterprise. You are the CEO of a big financial enterprise because you're disciplined and you've done it. Let us be the one that helps you out and figures out the next plan of action. I'm your host, Brian Preston, Mr. Bo Hansen, moneyguy.com. And by the way, a lot of you guys, because we are sending this out to our clients, you're like, I like this YouTube thing because we're embedding this link. <laughs> Subscribe. We always love getting subscribers on our YouTube channel as well as checking us out on our podcast and all the other social media ways we connect with our That's clients. Right. I'm your host, Brian, Mr. Bo. We'll talk to you soon.